It's The Real News Network. I'm Greg Bulpert in Arlington, Virginia. As we record this on Monday, Republicans and Democrats are deadlocked in Congress over a $1.8 trillion stimulus package to combat the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. Reports indicate that the plan includes $500 billion in bailout money for companies that could go out of business because of the economic downturn. Also, it includes one-time cash payments of $1,200 for every adult U.S. resident earning less than $100,000, plus $500 per child. A vote to pass the stimulus package failed in the Senate late Sunday, 47 to 47, along party lines. Five Republican senators did not participate because they are in quarantine. 60 votes are needed, though, for the budget measure to pass. Democrats are opposed to how the stimulus package fails to provide sufficient unemployment aid and that the business bailout portion of the plan includes no protections for workers and little to no oversight. Here's what Senator Elizabeth Warren had to say about the plan. We don't have enough details from the Republicans, but in our caucus there is great unhappiness with uh, how they're trying to advance a proposal that would be great for giant corporations and leave everyone else behind. We're not here to create a slush fund for uh, Donald Trump uh, and his family or a slush fund for the Treasury Department to be able to hand out to their friends. We're here to help workers. We're here to help hospitals. And uh, right now, what the Republicans have proposed does neither of those. Some Democrats have expressed skepticism about the cash payments, arguing that more targeted aid would be more effective. Many progressives, though, support expanding the cash payments portion. For example, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib of Michigan has introduced a bill that would provide a one-time cash payment of $2,000 to every U.S. resident, plus $1,000 per month, until a year after the economy recovers. Joining me now to discuss the stimulus plan and the different proposals are Doug Henwood and Jeff Hauser. Doug edits the Left Business Observer and is host of the radio program Behind the News. And Jeff is the founder and executive director of the Revolving Door Project at the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Thanks, Doug and Jeff, for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. There are several issues that I would like to explore with the two of you. Uh, There's a lot, of course, that we could go over, but I just want to limit it because we don't have that much time. So first of all, as I mentioned, there's the issue of cash payments. Now, Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and Rashida Tlaib have all come out with proposals to expand the Republican plan to issue one-time cash payments. Some people, however, have argued that cash payments make little to no sense at the moment. So let's start with you, Jeff. What do you think about this idea of cash payments? I think cash payments are less urgent than targeted aid in the sense of supporting hospitals and first responders and other people who are providing urgent services caring for the shelter needs of our homeless populations amidst the pandemic, uh, making sure that food gets to the people who need it. It's not quite as urgent, but it's going to be needed on a very expedited basis. And I believe we should be in a both and approach uh, to most of the, the degree to which we are in the hole is hard to overstate. And so we should not say, well, we need to focus on healthcare system versus protecting the income of Americans, we should try to do both. We should provide immediate short-term payments when we can, but we should not do so before we take care of healthcare. We should take care of the imminent needs as quickly as possible, but we should be aware that this spending is going to go to levels that it has never gone before, and it should. Uh, So we just need action quicker, but we should not therefore accede to corporate bailouts like the Republicans are proposing. Doug, I want to get your thoughts on this, but I also want to add that in, uh, in other programs here on The Real News, we've had economists such as um, Bill Spriggs of the AFL-CIO say that cash payments would actually be relatively ineffective because uh, this is a downturn where people are basically, uh, the reason that people are not spending money is mainly because they're you know, forced to be at home. So they'll just be spending more money on uh, things that they don't necessarily need and uh, that it won't benefit the, uh, the businesses that are in crisis, such as you know, tourism or the restaurants uh, and uh, hotels and those kinds of things. So um, what's your thoughts on this, on, on the need for a cash uh, benefit uh, program? I think the cash benefit is important. I think there are an awful lot of people who are going to be completely broke, won't be able to pay their rent, other basic expenses of life, and uh, $2,000 doesn't go very far 
but it certainly goes a lot further than zero. Uh, and uh, the, the, the targeted argument, I understand that people want to focus on the people most in need, but I'm not sure we have the machinery to do that properly uh, in, in a short period of time and the, the, the kind of time scale we need to operate on to get money to people who are you know, really desperate now. Uh, I also want to address the fact that you know, the, the, the economic problem now is not you know, a financial crisis so much as the fact that people can't go to work. So the whole productive sector at this point is broken. But on the other hand, people do need some cash to pay for food, uh, pay the rent, and, and to pay the utilities. It'd be nice to have some rent moratoriums, uh, you know, foreclosure moratoriums, but you know, we're not having those just yet. So I think it's important to get cash to people. Uh, the business bailouts, yeah, certainly there have to be conditions on them. Uh, and uh, the same with the financial bailouts. Um, I'm really you know, concerned that uh, the Republicans just want to give a blank check. <laughs> Bernie Sanders on his live stream last night was talking about $500 million for the candy industry. You know, we don't need that sort of thing. Uh, we need, do need protection for workers. Uh, but we also need to think about some of these industries. Like, do we really need a cruise ship industry at this point? And this is the most environmentally destructive thing you can imagine. We should think also about the airlines. You know, um, can we go back uh, to this world of endless flying uh, that, uh, that exists? before all this. We need to think about those kinds of things over the longer term as well. But you know, obviously, some targeted assistance, assistance to businesses are important. You know, the, uh, the, the British approach of uh, paying, uh, subsidizing something like 80% of payroll, although there are a lot of holes in it, you know, that's also a possibility to think about. Uh, but yeah, I think the cash payments are really urgent to get to people. And then uh, you know, certain business bailouts, but not the blank check, unconditional stuff that, the, that Mitch McConnell would love. Well, I want to return to the issue of the bailouts in a moment, but before we go, go there, I want to ask a question about the uh, targeted aid. The debate over universal cash payments versus targeted aid to the unemployed particularly and also to the medical uh, sector uh, seems to revolve around questions of effectiveness versus efficiency. That is, universal cash aid seems to be more efficient in that the government can send it right away to everyone without conducting a means test. Um, but uh, then, as I mentioned, some critics say that it's uh, too generalized and won't help those who need it most. On the other hand, expanding unemployment aid is more targeted, but less efficient uh, because it does involve means testing to see who really needs the aid. And, and so, in other words, it's going to take longer, perhaps, to get it to people. So, um, uh, Jeff, I, I want to get back to you on this. Uh, what, are, what do you think? I mean, in terms of the... Um, the targeted aid. I mean, do you think that this is something that could be done as quickly as, uh, as the um, cash payments? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? I'm not sure if it can happen as fast as expansion of the UI system, which we have in place, and we have a lot of infrastructure in place to maximize things like UI quickly. I think we're also going to maximize insurance. things like WIC and other targeted food programs. And obviously, we need to rapidly expand the capability of state and local governments to assist the homeless and other, and obviously public health uh, first and foremost. So we should expand dramatically the targeted programs that already exist. But we also, there's no reason why we can't do that and also look into universal basic income style ideas in the uh, short and medium run of the uh, sort that Rashida Tlaib and others are discussing right now. Those make a lot of sense. We don't need to connect the two necessarily in the same bill. The next bill that passes Congress is not going to be the final element of the coronavirus response by this Congress. So I would urge both targeted programs at as essentially the largest volumes that we can push through existing programs as quickly as possible, while also hastening to deploy universal basic income as quickly as possible. I advocate for a both and approach because I think the scale of the problem is tremendous and we actually want to radically reduce economic activity while keeping people as safe, as sheltered, as fed, and with as much health care as possible. And that is a very weird thing to be doing at the same time. And that's why we need both targeted uh, aid to make sure that people are okay for their short run needs. And we also need the universal basic income measures in order to keep people home, because that is what's going to keep us safe as a society, or as safe as we're capable of. Um, Doug, I, I, you both seem to agree pretty much on this both and approach, um, but I just want to push back a little bit more again than uh, on the issue of uh, of the cash payments. That is, I mean, if everybody, uh, I mean, what what benefit would it be for somebody who's already making? you know, a decent income and is able to work from home, let's say, to receive a cash uh, benefit 
um, uh, versus uh, if that money couldn't be used instead uh, for uh, for targeting towards uh, you know other areas that are in badly in need. What do you think? Tim? Well, first of all, I just want to make a point about the unemployment insurance system. It only covers about two thirds of uh, people who've lost their jobs. There are big holes in it. States have tightened eligibility uh, and, and duration uh, over the last several years, especially in the wake of the Great Recession. So uh, that there, there's some real serious holes in the unemployment insurance system that uh, we would have to fix, and that would take some time. And I'm sure there are a lot of states that wouldn't want to play along with that. Uh, but on, on, on the question of you know, people getting money that don't deserve it, we can always tax it away next year. Uh, it's, it's not like uh, this money's going to be gone forever. Uh, but I think the, the, the advantage of getting it out quickly and that sense of a boost of confidence that you're getting a check in the mail is very important uh, and uh, comforting to a lot of people. And if, uh, you know, Warren Buffett doesn't need his $2,000, but it's going to take a long time to find out, you know, who the lawyers are, who the Warren Buffetts are. Uh, and we don't really have that time right now. So I think just getting it out is, is urgent. But, you know, all the other things are extremely important. Expanding the unemployment insurance system, making sure that people have, have health care coverage. We need, you know, expansions of Medicaid. And again, we're going to have trouble with some of those states uh, over that. But, uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of things that need to be done. You know, targeted aid for industries, um, the, the aid to the first responders. Also, state and local governments are going to be really, you know, hitting a big fiscal hole. Uh, or, and the federal government uh, has the, is the only entity that can do anything about that at this point. So, yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of things that have to be done. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's beyond both end. It's, you know, <laughs> many end <laughs> have to be done. Um, I want to turn now to the issue that, of bailouts, which you actually already started talking about, uh, Doug. But as we saw earlier, this has been a major stumbling block with Democrats who are saying that the bailouts for companies should be tied to a number of conditions, such as limits on layoffs, on CEO pay, on stock buybacks, among other provisions. Now, uh, Jeff, you and your colleagues at CEPR, uh, Dean Baker and Eileen Applebaum, presented a series of proposals for an economic rescue program, but I don't think it included uh, any bailout money uh, for companies. Now, what, what do you think of the idea of providing bailout money? I think it is difficult to administer in a completely fair way. That isn't to say none of it should happen, but I think it will take um, a little bit of time and it's better to try to do bridge activities. Um, I would like to believe the Federal Reserve can be helpful in this regard. There are some uh, reasons to believe that their programs have not been as fair to small and medium-sized business as to large businesses. Some of that includes based off of their past experiences, some of it is their bias, as the Federal Reserve is made up of individuals who are accustomed to dealing with the largest businesses. Um, I don't think we should rush a mechanism through, given the current existence of bankruptcy laws and also the ability to uh, experiment with laws as in the United Kingdom that Doug was referencing to try to keep workers connected to uh, employers through subsidizing uh, wages. I, I'm wary to rush to bailouts when there are exist other policy tools that we have and bailouts that are rushed are likely to have fewer conditions and be less well suited to the actual need of keeping workers connected to employers as long as possible. Yeah, I think that's an interesting idea. Actually, that's also something that uh, they apply in Germany, which is known there as short work, where basically the number of hours that people work is reduced, and then the government subsidizes the lost income to a certain percentage. I think it's around 60 to 70 percent. So they don't make their full income, but they almost do, even if their uh, work hours are reduced by half. Uh, what do you think, Doug? Is that the better way to go? Uh, I, you mentioned earlier the importance that uh, some uh, industries ought to receive bailouts. What do you think? Yeah, I think um, the, the wage subsidy idea is a good one. Uh, you know, this, it's painful uh, for me to endorse subsidizing capitalists <laughs> to do their work. But, you know, like, these are urgent times and you can't uh, be too picky, I guess. Uh, but, you know, we also have to worry about entire industries disappearing. Um, and the restaurant sector, you know, is going to be it's good. what's going to happen in several months, you know, if we ever are allowed out of our houses again, will there be any restaurants left besides McDonald's? Uh, you know, that may be, you know, a quality of life issue more than an economic issue, but you know, there's what 20, 12, I think million people work in the restaurant sector. Uh, if that just disappears, that's going to be dire, a real dire transition. You know, a whole lot of smaller retail establishments are going to get hammered. So we need to think about some ways of preserving uh, these entities uh, for the next several months so they just don't you know, drive and blow away. I don't know off the top of my head exactly how to structure that, 
but uh, we need to think about uh, the, the kinds of damage that's going to be done to entire sectors of the economy. Uh, and people, you know, who've been working in the restaurants for all these years, where else are they going to go? You know, it's not like uh, your skills are all completely transferable to other places. So we need to think about the kind of what kind of economy we want. Uh, when, when this is all over. But uh, the idea that they should be done without conditions is, is, is insane. I mean, that's what, of course, uh, the funders of the Republican Party would like very much, but uh, we, need, we do need to preserve payrolls, preserve worker rights, and uh, make sure that uh, they don't waste money on you know five or six trillion dollars in stock buybacks over the last decade, just up in smoke. I mean, this is a very you know this is corporate America left itself very exposed to this kind of shock, heavy borrowing, um, use of a lot of the borrowed uh, money, uh, just buying back stock, not investing or hiring, we're doing R&D. So there's going to be an awful lot of corporate bankruptcy uh, coming up uh, because of this high debt levels. And we have to be prepared for that. Like entire companies and entire sectors are going to be disappearing soon. Yeah, that's actually something interesting that I was reading also someplace uh, that uh, that corporate debt is higher now than it was back in 2008, just before the great financial crisis. Um, oh yeah, and higher, it's the highest in history relative to GDP, yeah. Yeah, and so that will definitely mean something if uh, companies don't, aren't able to make their interest payments, then they're of course going to go bankrupt, which is the definition of bankruptcy. Um, but I just want to give you guys, uh, both of you, a, a kind of a, an opportunity to, to summarize. What do you think briefly are the main elements that ought to be in this economic stimulus plan that is being debated right now in Congress. Uh, let me start with you again, Jeff. Um, state and local aid is urgently needed and is wildly insufficient in the McConnell-Trump uh, plan. State and local governments are literally on the front lines of this dilemma. They don't have the ability to print money, unlike the federal government. Their sales and income tax revenue, but especially their sales tax revenue, we hope their sales tax revenue is plummeting at the moment. That is, in fact, our goal. So uh, we should be shoveling money to them so that their first responders, so their home, uh, programs to help support the homeless, public health, we, we need money there ASAP. And in fact, if it's necessary to uh, take that and unemployment insurance and move that through much more quickly than we figure out the macroeconomic uh, and labor market uh, aid, I think that would be fine. I think we need money sooner rather than later to deal with the immediate crisis, which is to keep people in their homes, fed, safe, and not you know, getting each other sick. That is our most urgent goal. And I think the desire to rush the macroeconomic response and keep it connected to aid to hospitals, state and local governments and the like is just ridiculous. And it is a mechanism by which corporate America hopes to get unfettered aid um, under an urgency that they don't really have at the moment, especially given the existence of Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which is just an important uh, backdrop to this conversation. Uh, but then I think we need to move very quickly to a large macroeconomic response that is concerned with efficiency, but is also just broadly concerned with keeping up uh, confidence in the economy and keeping as many workers connected to businesses as possible businesses that are better suited to Chapter 11 bankruptcy, like airlines, we should be less sensitive to their shareholders and their current executives than in the case of restaurants, which as Doug mentioned, it's not really the fault of a small restaurant here that they don't have pandemic insurance and that they, it's very unlikely, you know, many restaurants have been doing stock buybacks. So I think we, over time, can come up with an efficient and fair and just uh, macroeconomic response, but we need to get that aid out to state and local governments and to hospitals ASAP. And Doug, uh, what do you think are the top priorities at this moment? Well, I agree with a lot of what Jeff said. I think it's uh, aiding state and local government is extremely important at this point, uh, especially, you know, given how AWOL the federal government has been in a lot of this. So the states uh, in particular are doing an awful lot of the work of, of uh, mobilizing an emergency response. Um, and uh, I also, you know, I, I put a higher priority on the uh, the two thousand dollar payments. Uh, I think that'd be really a good thing for most people. And uh, you know, like I kind of said we could tax it away if there are any efficiencies uh, involved, inefficiencies involved next uh, next year. Um, but you know, I think also this 
we're not even thinking about the kind of psychological damage this is all going to do. What's this going to do to us as people um, as we emerge from this? I don't know. I mean, there's going to be some kind of really, really serious um, readjustment problems if we ever emerge from this. Um, and we need to start thinking about that because there's just going to be just so much loneliness and anxiety. Uh, it's going to eat away at a lot of us. Uh, it's a very difficult period. And, uh, you know, aside from uh, all the economic emergencies uh, that have to be mobilized uh, around, um, there's also this you know, psychological uh, our health as a society is really going to be a, a very serious issue after this. And uh, we need to start thinking about that too. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there for now. I was speaking to Doug Henwood, editor of the Left Business Observer, and Jeff Hauser, founder and executive director of the Revolving Door Project at the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Also, both of them have uh, presented uh, plans that are in more detail than we could discuss today, and we're going to link to those. Uh, thanks again, Doug and Jeff, for having joined us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.